I got this cute Apple band right here for my watch, but I can't run in this. Like, there's just no way. It would be funky by the end of every run. But it's also a pain in the butt having to change out my Apple watch band every time that I want to go work out. But, you know, first world problems. First world problems. Anyway. I decided that I need to get out of the house, so I'm gonna go run. And hopefully this will clear my mind. And it's been so long since I've run outside, I didn't even know where my running glasses were. But I found them, so we're ready to go. And today I'm wearing something a little bit different. I got this little Nathan thing. I don't know, in a random like Dick's Sporting Good box a while ago. And it's kind of hot outside. I usually run with my orange mug, but like I said, it's been a long time since I've run outside. So that thing is probably filthy and dirty and I need to wash it. So this is going to be the next best thing. And I'm wearing my Brooks for the first time in forever. You know those people that like film their self going on the runs and then they like put their keys on their car, like on their tire or whatever while they go run, but they like openly film that they did that? That's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know why I just thought about that, but I don't do that for the record. I will carry around all my keys and everything, my wallet, everything. Anyway. I'm gonna do a little warm up and we're gonna do a little mood booster. Oh, by the way, welcome to the video. I'm gonna go run and then we're gonna talk about some books. So yeah, run and then books that I read last month and we'll go about it that way. So welcome to the vlog. Oh, by the way, did I say, hi, my name is Angela. If you're new here, I lost 200 pounds, fell in love with running. Now I'm trying to live the healthiest life I possibly can while being a mom. And if you know, you know, I need to change that because, because life is just different. I am still trying to live the healthiest life I possibly can. That might be better. Okay, full honesty here. I've already recorded this video. I hated it, so here we are again. I was gonna sit down and edit it and it just was not a vibe for me. I don't know what it is about making book videos. They just make me nervous. So here we are, back again. So I've already done all this on my blog. I don't even know if you can see this. The light is probably too bright, but it's my first foray with with lighting here but I feel like I needed it because this room is a little dark anyway so now we're going to talk about the books that I read in February I have my iPad here it's like I said already did the blog post but I kind of want to use it for notes so the first book that I read uh, first off if you're new here or this is the first book video that you are watching of mine I'm a Kindle reader so I read religiously on my Kindle should have brought that here. Okay, so yes, I read on my Kindle all the time. Now, I do go to the bookstore, I buy books, I do all that. So every once in a while, I will have physical books. This month, I have physical books, but um, I did get a lot of books from like the library and Kindle Unlimited this month or, yeah, so I don't really have that many like physical books to 
to show you. So let me just give you the rundown of my February. I read eight books, one from the library, two from Kindle Unlimited. Um, I read contemporary romance and some literary fiction this month. We can just go ahead and get started with it. So the first book that I read this month was Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. I gave it a four and a half stars. So basically this is a story about it's like Friday Night Lights but in a hockey town. So it's about the story of this town about hockey and how everything is influenced by hockey and this one particular event happens that kind of divides the town. And so you have to, you're kind of forced to choose what side you're on. You're either with hockey or you're against hockey. This event that happened, I don't want to like give away too much because it's, I don't want to spoil you because this book was actually really good. It was beautifully written. The event that happened is very tragic and it's, you know, sad to see how people actually react. There are a lot of characters in this book and like when I first started reading it, I didn't know if I really wanted to continue reading it because there, there was no way that I thought that we needed to know all these characters. Okay, of course I was wrong. I'm not the author and of course I don't write books so I just talk about them. But there were so many characters and at the end of the book you kind of started to see how each character fit into the story and it was very overwhelming at first but totally worth it in the end. It was just a really great book about commitment and loyalty and friendship from adults all the way down to the kids. The story does focus around the kids and the consequences of what um, adults do. I just thought it was interesting to see like the ripple effect of what adults do down to kids. And it was just like a very moving story. There are, there's a lot of heavy issues in this book. You might wanna read the trigger warnings about that before you um, before you jump in. Off the top of my head I just gave it four and a half. I could easily see it being a five star read by the end of the year. That's just not something that I hand out very easily. Moving on to the next book that I read. The next book I read was Daisy Hates right here. Now you may be thinking Angela haven't you already read this book? Yes this was a reread because the new Magnolia Parks book came out in February like the day after Valentine's Day I think. Or the day before I don't know whenever it came out I wanted to be able to read the book and but I hadn't like finished the rest of the series because I had only read the first two books but had already decided that I loved it so I didn't want to go too far. It is the second book in the Magnolia Parks universe actually I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about all of these books so I'm just gonna be real with you. I read Daisy Hates which is my favorite book five stars and then I read Magnolia Parks the Long Way Home right here and then I read Daisy Hates The Great Undoing. So I'm gonna kind of talk about all these books together. Okay but first off Daisy Hates follows the same timeline as the first book but just told in Daisy Hates perspective. Personally I love the Daisy Hates books more. I like Daisy Hates better as a character. Magnolia just seems a little shallow and like so into herself not I'm not saying that Daisy is not the same way but Daisy has a little bit more depth to her and with the stories being told on the same timeline and different POVs I just prefer Daisy better. I like Daisy's boyfriend better Christian Hems and I like Daisy's brother better <laughs> than um, all the other characters in the Magnolia Parks books even though they're basically the same characters you know it's the same circle of friends. Daisy is kind of like on the outside of that friend group in this book and so the stories match up but they don't really intertwine that much. Only in like reference to Christian. That's the only time that it ever lines up. So these books, these Magnolia Park books are like more character driven and less plot driven. They say no plot all vibes. That's what this is. Like if you're looking for like a huge build up to something it's you're not gonna get it. This is like watching I don't know kind of like Gossip Girl in a sense because you know it was about the characters and the crazy things that they got into and their relationships and things like that but not like a huge overarching story. There's not a whodunit. There's not are they gonna fall in love type. I, I mean kind of but not really but I guess they would consider this a contemporary romance but like it's not really I don't know this is like contemporary fiction in my mind. But yeah so the first book 
or the this is the second book daisy hates and then the next book so it kind of alternates in the universe between magnolia parks and um daisy hates the next book that i read was magnolia parks the long way home this is the continuation of magnolia park story magnolia has left and come uh, she left and went to the united states and then came back to london and kind of picks up where things left off she's like dating around she's trying to make bj mad and all of that bj has a girlfriend so they kind of go into how to manage that and at the same time magnolia is trying to clean up the mess that was left behind with christian because christian loves Daisy but Daisy thinks that Christian loves Magnolia so it goes into like this whole thing. I don't want to give too much away about the books because I actually love these books and I want people to read them. I gave Daisy Hates a five star. I gave this one a four and a half. This was actually a really good book. The only thing that makes me upset is I don't know Magnolia does questionable stuff of course because I don't know she just leads a different life but I don't know she just seems like too naive to me to the fact that she's like literally the smartest girl in her friend group besides her sister but like the things that were happening there was no way that she just couldn't grasp the understanding of what is happening it just i don't know the questions that she would ask i just she's just not very self-aware and that's one of the reasons why i kind of don't like magnolia it's like she's lived a hard life but she's lived like first world problem what am I saying third world problem if she did then she wouldn't be acting like this it's like first world problem problems that are like actually big deals but like not enough to like really scratch the surface here so that was the one thing that kind of just irritated me about this book in particular how she dealt with Julian and all of that like it just I don't know I know that she could not have been that naive. Four and a half right here though. This book was amazing. And then I moved on to the next book, which was Daisy Hates the Great Undoing, which is also in the same timeline here with The Long Way Home. This picks up with Daisy. Daisy has finally gotten what she's wanted. She wants like a normal life and she's gotten out of her family business and everything and she's moving on. And she's got a new boyfriend who is kind of a little controversial because of what her family actually does. But because there are some threats on Daisy's life, then she has to move back home. So that normal life that she was trying to have all of a sudden goes up in the balance. And so then now we start to see Daisy and Christian actually fall in love again and get on that timeline. And we also see how her relationship, Daisy's relationship changes with her brother over time. And I don't know, I just really, really love this book. And then it ended with a huge cliffhanger, which also was in the Magnolia Parks book. But like we got more of an explanation of why those things were happening and how it like affected everyone. And of course, I gave this book a five stars. And because of that reason, I was trying to jump into the new Magnolia Parks book. Let me get it. The new Magnolia Parks book. Magnolia Parks Into the Dark and this sucker is thick let me tell you it's like 720 pages and I got about 275 pages into it and I had to stop because I, maybe I think that I was on a Magnolia Parks overload and I felt myself going into a slump and this book is really heavy and there are major trigger warnings here it was just a lot and I just I felt myself slumping so I had to put it down I will pick it up again but I had to put it down so anyway, let's get back to the other books that I read. Back to the trusty iPad. I'm sorry, it just started raining outside and you may be able to hear it because I'm sitting next to a window. Before I went into like the, the Magnolia Parts haze, I did read some other books. I read The Long Game by Elena Armos. I got this off of Kindle Unlimited. My thing about Elena Armos, I typically do like her books. I like the American Roommate Experience and I like the Spanish Love Deception. Very cute, but man, The Long Game was a long haul for me to read. So this is like a contemporary romance and they are enemies to lovers type thing. And it was just, it was, it took a lot to get into it. The, they kept alluding to something that happened in her past that to me didn't really turn out to be that big of a deal for it to like have been like the conflict of the story for her. Um, the way that they were alluding to it made me want to know more. And then the uh, male MC Cameron, like his story was interesting, but then like the reasons why he was doing the things that he was doing were, it's kind of, I mean, understandable, but I don't know, it was just kind of weak. Like 
the conflict in the story wasn't a conflict in a romance novel will make or break the story I will say that like if it's not worth it then that kind of does ruin the story and I felt like here it was a little bit not worth it so I just gave this book like three stars like you can take it or leave it it's on Kindle Unlimited so go ahead and read it because it's free but I don't know it's, it wasn't my favorite book and I don't necessarily know if I would recommend it I gave it like 2.75 stars but I'm gonna round it up to three I don't know this just wasn't a book that was worth it for me um then I moved on and I read Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher and if you don't know I actually love Lauren Asher books I started reading them but like as a joke and when F1 was canceled last year so I read the F1 like romance series and I don't know I like her writing I like the way that she develops her characters I love how she has these series so it's like not just one book you know it's like you kind of get invested and then you move along so um the love redesigned is the first book in the lakefront billionaires and this is about Julia and Dahlia who are from Lake Wisteria if you know anything about the Dreamland series then you'll know about Lake Wisteria. So I like how like all of her series are kind of connected that way but this is a totally different series than that one. Dahlia and Julian are like old childhood friends. They went off to college together and then they had the possibility of something happening but then something happened that stopped them from getting together. And so now life has brought them, well, Julian lives in Lake Wisteria and Dahlia is like this fixer-upper type TV personality, but is forced to come home and her and her fiance decide to call it quits. She has to come home and she's trying to like heal and face all of her demons. And at the meantime, she's face to face with Julian. I don't know. I just really love how the characters were developed and how they kind of intertwined. I loved how this had like a whole family unit behind it because we had Dahlia's family and we had Julian's family who are really really close anyway and they just added a lot of comedic moments to it like I like Lauren Asher books because they're serious but then they're also fun at the same time so I just love reading her romance novels yes they're a little bit spicy but I don't know like her characters are written so well that I you know that's just another thing that happened um, I do love Lauren Asher books I gave this book four and a half stars if you are into like romance books or whatever I feel like that this is one that you need to read how many books is that that I've talked about one two three four okay so I read When in Rome by Sarah Adams this was a cute book so this is about Amelia Ray who is like a pop star who needs to get away because she's about to go on tour she's like tired she's confused she doesn't know really what she wants and so she decides to go to Rome Kentucky because she wanted to go to or she has a connection to Italy but she can't go because she's like she doesn't have enough time and her car breaks down in Noah's like front yard magically and Noah is like the town stud he is this is grumpy sunshine they challenge each other force proximity type of romance here it's very simple I read this book in like 24 hours um it's just like it's just your standard standard rom-com story that if if you think about a romance book then this is what you're gonna get it was cute and um, I don't really remember that much about the book like it didn't stay with me and it's just like the basic rom-com book um this was actually the first Sarah Adams book that I, I had written read written I haven't written this book this is the first Sarah Adams book that I've read and I know that she has like some stellar reviews from other people it wasn't bad it wasn't great it was just like middle of the road if you're if you're trying to get out of a slump or you just want to read something really quick I feel like that this is a good book for you to read nothing life-changing about it and then the last book that I read after I gave up on Magnolia Parks I got from the library was a curse for true love which is the third book in the once upon a time once upon a broken heart series i can talk i promise i'm just a little nervous these videos make me nervous i don't know I've, I've talked about this before i know i've talked about it on my blog don't forget to go check out my blog i'll link it down below um but i i'm not in love with the once upon a broken heart series it's kind of it's kind of a spinoff of the Carval series and I did not like Carval at all I only read the first book and I was like no this isn't for me so but everyone talked about how good this book is it is a YA fantasy 
It is very, it's, it's very YA. It's based in fairy tales. Having that fairy tale ending, of course, it's called A Curse for True Love. After I kind of gave way of what the books were supposed to be about, you know, I, I liked them, I didn't love them, but I wanted to go ahead and finish off the series. I got it from the library, it came through, I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna read it. And I actually enjoyed the third book more. I don't know, the other books had so much going on with them, vampires and patron saints and all, like, it was just a lot to build up into the story. And then I don't really think that it was all necessary. I don't, there were just some elements of the story that just didn't really make sense. But I like how straightforward this book was. I guess maybe because we were working towards the end, we had to end the series and it was just very straight up, you know, good versus evil happening here. Who can I trust? type things you know it's like this series is not very high stakes I don't it's not high stakes at all like they try and make it high stakes but it's not it's just someone looking for love and it's cute and it's based in fairy tales and for that reason it is very cute it is wrapped up with a cute little bow at the end and I did love how the story actually wrapped up so I was satisfied with this book because I really didn't love the other books. I'm not saying that I love this book, but I feel like that it was the perfect ending for the series. I mean, it's a very easy read. All three books are a very easy read. I, I feel like it's, it's a very like niche kind of book series that I guess I would recommend it to my goddaughter. Um, I gave it three stars. I think I gave it three stars. Three and a half stars. See, I gave it three and a half stars. So I really did enjoy the last book of the series. I had a very, very good reading month. Um, January was not strong for me. I felt like I was slumping. Um, December, I barely picked up a book. January, I was trying to get back into myself. And February was like actually the first time that I felt like myself again. I was running and um, F1 was coming back and I was just excited to read. My Goodreads goal for the year is to read 60. So far I've read 14 books as of today, but those include the two books that I did have already read for March, but you'll have to wait for those. Um, yeah, so like I said, I recap my month of reading on my blog, so you can always go um, check that out. I'll link it down below. Okay, comment down below what books did you read and what was your favorite book that you read last month. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.